Good morning. Well, it's morning for me. I don't know what time it is for you. I just picked up something from Facebook Marketplace. I drove about an hour to go pick it up. It's in the back. You can probably see a little bit of it peeking out. And you're going to get to see what I do with what I just picked up in an upcoming episode here very soon. There are two separate Goodwill locations that I don't make it to very often. So I'm excited to shop at some new Goodwills in the area. And we are going to head inside and see what we can find. Well, hello little cutie bird. I love Scandinavian design and this little birdie looks very Scandinavian. It is only $3.99 and it does have a signature there on the bottom so I don't think it is mass produced. There are certain things that always sell really well in my online vintage shop. Candle holders and salt and pepper shakers are two of them. This is a nice vintage teak pair for only $4.99. I will oil these up when we get back to the studio and bring the beautiful color of teak back to life. <laughs> this guy's kind of awesome and weird at the same time. He is a candle holder and it looks like they've got $19.99 on him. That's kind of steep, but this brutalist style is so popular right now. I don't know the maker on this, but even at $19.99, I feel like that's plenty of room for me to make some good profit on him. And he's just fun, so I want to get him. I'm on a roll the last few weeks finding some really good fruit baskets. This one is fun because of the bright red color on it. It is $6.99. We are going to get this because I think it's always fun to have a pop of color in the room. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. Do you remember a couple episodes back when I found two of these for my sister's bedroom makeover, but they didn't match? Well, this one matches the darker one, but I happen to have just recently painted them. It is too bad that I didn't find this one sooner because it could have saved me the trouble of having to paint the other ones. Now these, on the other hand, we are probably going to be getting. These look like they are Italian pottery, and I love the beautiful floral pattern and color on them. Finding a pair of matching lamps at the thrift store is always a win. They are $24.99 each, which is a little bit steep, but because they are Italian pottery, I think they are worth it. This is a leather wrapped alligator. He's kind of fun, but he looks a little bit scary. And I haven't seen the alligators go for a lot of money. There's currently one listed on eBay for $29.99. So we're not gonna get him today, but if he was the camel version of this, I would be picking him up because I've sold several of those in the past for closer to 60 to $80 each. This is kind of funny, but I actually think that I'm going to get this bag of faux fruit. It is $7.99. And I was just thinking the other day when I was decorating at the studio that I needed fruit for this beautiful bowl I was decorating with. So this giant bag of fruit is going to come in pretty handy when I'm decorating. One can never have too many candles, especially when you get them at a thrift store. This giant pillar candle is only $4.99. I had to come back for this giant orange glass vase. I walked by him twice and I wasn't gonna get him because I just wasn't sure if it was a vintage piece or who the designer might be, but my gut intuition is telling me to get it and take a chance. 
Well, that went better than I could have hoped. I found some really amazing stuff in there. I picked up a couple things that I'm not 100% positive of the history and the value on, but there was just something about them that my gut was telling me to get it. So when we get back to the studio, I will haul everything, talk about it more, decorate with it, and hopefully give you some updates on what I have since found out about them. Everything's buckled in back there. I've got the lamps wrapped up and seat belted so they're nice and safe, and we are headed to the next Goodwill. I'm gonna get this pair of swirl candles. These are $3.99 each, and the color on them is fantastic. And I love the fact that they have some nice texture to them. I am also gonna add this bag of candles to the cart. These are $3.99 for all four candles. Now these candles are a little unexpected. They are beautiful tropical flowers and I think that they're supposed to float in water. It is $6.99 for this entire bag. I am getting them and I bet a lot of you can probably guess where these are gonna be used. Loving the shape and style on this lamp. It is only $6.99. I love the style of floral pottery that is made in Mexico. It's got this beautiful openwork design and this vase is $7.99. And I know that these can sell for quite a bit more than that. So we are gonna get this beautiful vase and I'm gonna do a little bit more research to find out what the actual value on this would be. I'm wondering if this openwork design is intended for you to have a small candle lit in the bottom of it. That way the light would come flickering through the openings. We are gonna try that when we get back to the studio. Loving this candle holder. It's got a very abstract design to it and it's nice and heavy and it looks like it's not mass produced. It is $6.99. It's got such a cool shape to it and I'm excited to look this one up and see if I can find out who made it. This is a pretty little piece of hand painted Polish pottery and it is $2.99. a wonderful vintage tiki mug for $1.99. I am on a mission to not buy any tiki mugs at antique stores or vintage stores leading up to our August party this year. My goal is to try to thrift as many as I possibly can. We didn't have enough last year, so I'm needing around 20 more. And for $1.99, we are getting this one. Is this not the cutest car you've ever seen in your whole entire life? I love it. <laughs> It is pouring outside. This is what happens when my hair gets wet in the rain. <laughs> I found some good things inside. I met a couple wonderful subscribers. Thanks for saying hi. It's always so fun to chat with you and find out about why you watch my videos and why you love vintage and Goodwill. I got a couple pieces that are fairly valuable that I'm gonna tell you a little bit more back at the studio. I have a long drive home in the rain, so we can go ahead and just fast forward this and cut directly to the studio hall. Welcome to the studio haul portion of this video. We found some really good things today and I'm excited to decorate with them and show you why I picked them up. Some of the items that I got today are quite valuable and I got them to resell in my online vintage shop, leftcoastrevivals.com for those of you who are new. And some of the items that I got today are for rooms that I am decorating right now. And I also got a few things for our upcoming summer tiki party. So without any further ado, let's jump to talking about the things that I got today why I got them and how much they are worth. First up are these gorgeous Italian pottery lamps. These are most likely from the 1960s or 70s, and you know that I love Batosi pottery, and most of the Batosi that I pick up for my personal home tends to lean more towards the modernist side of Italian pottery. But I am also so incredibly drawn to this more floral Italian traditional pottery style as well. This is the kind of stuff that really brings out that bohemian side of me. My husband Jesse and I decided 
decided when we bought our new home that we wanted it to be a really calming space and we are going with a little bit more of a subdued Japanese meets Scandinavian calming style in there. But there will always be a few places in our home where I'm gonna have bold pops of color and mixed patterns. Currently it is in our guest bedroom upstairs because at my core my love for design does not just end with one style or one era. And this pair of lamps that I got today is that perfect representation of that side of me. These lamps were $24.99 each and I think that they were absolutely worth that price. They have a few chips on them on the top rim and a few on the bottom. But here's the thing, I've been to Italy and almost everything looks old there. Nothing is perfect and I think that that is part of the charm. That is part of caring more about the sustainability side of it and the history than it is for perfection. I just love these lamps. I love all of the colors. They are so pretty. So let's set up a pretty vignette and see how these look styled up. kind of kicked off today finding a few Danish modern looking things. This is what I was talking about with the more simple minimalist Scandinavian style design. In fact, I think that this bird is coming home with me. I got him for only $3.99 and he's going to get added to the bookshelf at home. I'm waiting for a living room reveal episode, so I'm not going to show you this guy staged at home, but we're going to do some little decorating with him right here in the studio. picked up a handful of different candles at Goodwill. That is where I primarily get all of my candles to burn. And these are gonna be great for my sister's bedroom. When you're buying candles, I think it's really important to mix different shapes, sizes, and textures. I got a pair of these ribbed swirl candles and they're nice and wide and short. And then I also got a bag full of candles. And I especially love these where they have the smaller section on the bottom, but they're wider. That way you can put them in a traditional candlestick and they will fit but they've got a nice bulky look to them. I found several really good items for the tiki party this summer. I got this entire bag full of tropical flowers for only $6.99. I think that these are so beautiful. My guess is that these should be floating in a bowl of water. The problem is, I don't know if I wanna burn them. They're just too pretty to burn. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have them floating in a bowl of water, and then I can also put some maybe simple white candles that are actually lit in the bowl. That way it will have the effect of the beautiful glowing candles without lighting these beautiful flowers because I would love to be able to use these every year for our annual party. Can't believe I found these. They are so pretty. And this is one of the things that I love about going to Goodwill is when you're planning a party, you think of all the things you need. But until I went to Goodwill today, I never knew that I needed floating flower candles. If you are a vintage reseller, I know that it can be really overwhelming to change the platform that you are selling on or to take that leap and finally sell on your own independent website. But as someone who has been selling on a Squarespace website for nine years now, I'm here to tell you that they make it so much easier and you can do this. Having your own Squarespace website to sell your products on means that you can have your own creative control of your own website. My advice is to take the chance, take the risk and go for it and have fun in the process of creating a website that represents your brand, your products and you. Head to squarespace.com to start your free trial today and when you are ready to launch your website, head to squarespace.com slash left coast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A huge thing Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. All right, this guy. I have no idea what to think on this. My gut is telling me that it is a very good quality made piece. There are a few reasons. One is that it has over three different layers of glass all layered together. And I am very new to learning about glass and there is so much I don't know, but I always trust my instincts. When something feels like it's a really high quality piece, 
I follow my gut intuition that there's a good chance that it could be a designer or a brand that is really well known and appreciated for their artisan craft. Now this one was $14.99. So to me, it is worth the risk that this could have been mass produced overseas in hopes that it wasn't and that it is a designer vase. I did find another comp online when I got back here to the studio with this identical vase saying that it was a mid-century modern vase and they had over a hundred dollars on it. This has such a fantastic design and shape to it. It's going to be kind of fun to decorate with this today and do something a little bit outside of what you typically see me decorate with. Some of my favorite pottery from around the world comes out of Oaxaca, Mexico, and I believe that that is where this is from. I believe that this is called lacework design when the sections are carved out of it. This is such a beautiful piece of pottery. It was only $7.99. I'm gonna pop in a few pictures that I found on the internet that show examples of the women in Oaxaca making lacework pottery. It would be a dream come true to get to meet some of the women who make this pottery and see the process and learn a little bit more about it. I love when you're in Goodwill and they roll out a couple carts full of new things that have not hit the shelves. Some of the best things I've ever found at Goodwill have been in the carts that get rolled out and no one's had a chance to look at those items yet. This is not an incredibly valuable piece, but I really love Polish pottery. This was only $2.99. It is signed on the bottom and it is a candle holder. So one of the things that I love to do to make design look intentional when you are buying secondhand and thrifted items is to mix and match. That way you can have one of everything, but if you have a common theme, it all looks very well intentionally designed and it's easy to find things for $1.99, mix them all together and have a high end beautiful look. And you will be surprised how many different patterns you can mix together while it's still looking beautiful. And if you feel like it's looking a little bit too busy or too overwhelming for you and your style and your home, then go ahead and mix in some neutral color pottery too to balance it out. I want to show you a little pro tip here. So when I have pottery that I have displayed and you want the bowls to be raised up so you can see the smaller stacking bowls, I typically use a little piece of cork or a cork lid. Usually I'll use something a little bit flatter than this and that helps keep the pottery from chipping and it raises it up. Otherwise you have all three bowls really stacked in tight and you can't see the patterns. I used to be staging all of my finds at my house and I pretty much always have fresh fruits and vegetables there. But now that I'm here in the studio, I'm not gonna be hauling food back and forth from my house to the studio. So I thought that this would be great to have on hand for when I am staging and also good for a little pops of color in the background of product photography. For $7.99, I am now set for life with fake fruit. This guy is so weird and I love him for his weirdness. He reminded me of the Gia Cometti not sure if I said that right, but the Giacometti Brutalist sculptures that are super famous. I did some research when I got back here and I found a couple of very similar ones online. They just said mid-century modern Brutalist candle holder dude and they were priced around $50. I really loved this candle holder when I saw it on the shelf in Goodwill, and I didn't know anything about this or who might have designed it. I was able to identify it, and it was done by Ivan McLean in the 1990s, and some of his metalwork I saw sold for over $200. So I think that the value on this one is probably going to be around $150. So not bad for getting it at Goodwill for only $6.99. She is so pretty. This is a hand carved, hand painted piece out of Bali. And she is a Hindu goddess. And this one came with the original paperwork telling about her. It actually comes with a hook here and you hang her.
Now this one is going to possibly be for my sister's bedroom makeover. There is a bookshelf that has room for one lamp about this size and I also have the wrought iron twisted one that I got last week that is a little bit more traditional and not as contemporary or modern. I like the idea of having a couple options for her since everything is thrifted and I can always resell it on Facebook Marketplace or on my website. I've been picking up a few different options for certain things in that space. I want to make sure she's really going to love it and I also think it's going to be fun for you as the viewer because you can kind of see how the same space can look different with a couple different options. This lamp was $6.99 and we will just have to wait and see it in the space and decide which one of the two lamps are going to make the final cut. Welcome to the updates and identifications portion of this video. We are going to start out with the Leo Salazar wood carved monk. So if you've missed this episode, you're going to want to go back and watch it. I found this at Habitat for Humanity for only $6. I had no idea who he was, what he was, and who made him, but I was able to identify him as a hand carved piece by a very famous wood carver named Leo Salazar. He also had a son, Leonardo, who did carve wood too and who learned under him. After doing research I found out that he was worth over $1,200 so I listed him on my website and I really wanted him to sell because he's a very special piece. I listed him for $750 and I put a note in the listing that I was going to donate half of that money back to Habitat for Humanity. Our local Habitat for Humanity does so much good in the community. They didn't know what they had and I wanted to find a way to be able to make money on my find to fund this YouTube channel and my career and my employee. But I also wanted to be able to give back to Habitat for Humanity because because I don't think that the person who donated this knew the value of it either. So I wanted to give a huge thank you to Karen for purchasing him and I hope you cherish this beautiful historical piece and thank you for being able to give me the opportunity to give back to Habitat for Humanity as well. So it turns out that this candle holder is a vintage 1960s German Weinfurtner piece. It was originally sold with little tiny crystals that hung from these tiny tiny holes in the top here on every single one of these circles. If you missed the recent episode where I found this along with a ton of other great stuff in Coburg, Oregon, I will link that in the description below so you can easily find that video. On that video after showing you this find, I had several of you from Scandinavia comment below that you see these often in your local stores and that they always have crystals inside. So thank you for that lead because that helped me identify exactly what this was. It is not a brass knuckle candle holder like my husband said but it originally would have had crystals in it. Technically, this is not an update, but you haven't seen these because I got them on an online auction and they sold in my February 1st Friday sale and I love them so much that I really wanted you to get a chance to see how cool these candle holders are. They're vintage made out of wood and I call them the zigzag candle holders. That is a wrap for the vintage today. It was a great day out thrifting and I'm super happy with my finds. I think that I got some really unique things today and a lot of them will be coming to my March 3rd first Friday sale. So mark your calendars. That sale is going to launch March 3rd at 3 p.m. Pacific time on my website leftcoastrevivals.com. For those of you who are new here, I list all of my vintage finds the first Friday of every single month and you can go to my website and subscribe to my newsletter so you will get an alert as soon as the sale goes live. And if you have your heart set on an item and you really don't want to miss the sale, you can hit that add to calendar button and it will send you an alert and a reminder 15 minutes before the sale launches. And I also wanted to give an update on the Italy flea market shopping trips this spring. Jesse and I are hosting two back-to-back -back trips abroad in Italy and we are so excited to meet all of you who have already booked. As of today, when I'm filming this, one spot has opened up on the first trip, which is going to be May 19th through 20th. And there are currently two spots available on the June 2nd through 9th trip. If you are interested in those trips, I'm going to share a little highlight reel to let you know what the itinerary is. And if you are interested in booking, you can go to leftcoastrevivals.com, click on our travel page, and you can book directly from there. I can't believe it, but these Italy trips are just over three months away. They are coming up fast. So we are going to have two trips. The first trip is May 19th through 26th. The second trip is June 2nd 
2nd through 9th. Here is a little bit about what we are going to be doing on these trips. Day one, you will arrive in Rome and we will get to know each other this evening at a local restaurant in Rome at our welcome dinner. I am so excited about day two because you better be ready to eat. We are gonna be doing a food tour in one of the most famous neighborhoods in Rome. After walking off all of the amazing food we have eaten, you will have the rest of the evening on day two to explore Rome on your own. If you didn't come here for the food, day three is what you came for. We will be spending the morning shopping at a famous Roman flea market, hunting for treasures. After the market, the rest of the day is free to explore Rome on your own, or you can come and hang out with Jesse and I and do more vintage shopping. After breakfast at our hotel on day four, we are going to take a train to my favorite city in the world, Florence, Italy. We will get settled into our new hotel and take an evening walking tour of the city. Day five, we're going to head to the Tuscan countryside for a pasta making class. I am so excited about this day because I have only made hand made pasta a handful of times and I need to learn from a real Italian chef the right way to do it. We will be having a group lunch together in the countryside eating the pasta we just made. We will end this fabulous day with a sunset boat cruise on the Arno River and get the chance to see Florence and all of its famous bridges from a completely different perspective. Day six, we are headed back to the flea markets. We'll be visiting one of my favorite flea markets in Florence, Italy, and the one that I found my Batosi cat at for only $15. There is also a food market and clothing market outside of the vintage, so this is gonna be a fun spot to stop at. You'll also have the rest of the day free to explore. So if there are any museums or locations you really wanna go to, you're gonna have plenty of time to do that. Day seven, we'll have breakfast at the hotel and then you'll have a free morning in Florence before we take a train back to Rome. We will get settled back into our hotel in Rome, have a few hours to explore on your own, and then we will conclude this amazing adventure with a special farewell dinner where we're gonna be able to reminisce our amazing trip, share our stories and treasures with each other, and hopefully make plans for the next one. Jesse and I are so excited to meet all of you and share in this incredible adventure together. If you were interested in booking, there are just a couple spots left. But once the trips are sold out, you can still get on the wait list. People change their plans all the time and you never know when a spot is going to open back up. If you are interested in joining Jesse and I on this Italian adventure this spring, head to leftcoastrevivals.com, click on the travel section, and you can book directly from our website. Thank you so much for joining me today in our Goodwill shopping adventures, and I will see you in a brand new episode very soon.